Hey there, Sam. So we know that there are two types of function in JavaScript. First of all, the normal function, and also the arrow function. Let's take a deep look on how arrow function is different to the normal function. Difference number one, we can omit the return statement and the curly braces in an arrow function when the function logic is a one-liner. For example, let's say we have a function called multiply, and the multiply function accepts two arguments, x and y. And the result of this function is simply x multiplied by y. But instead of writing out the curly braces and also the return statement, we can shorten it to x multiplied by y directly after the arrow. It looks much cleaner, right? If we take advantage of this feature, it can really cut down a lot of lines in our code. Okay, difference number two. When the function only has one argument, the round bracket is optional. For example, let's create a function that will add two to any number that I pass to it. So in this function, num is the only argument, so I don't need to surround it with a pair of round bracket. And this function will return num plus two. And again, the function logic is a one-liner. That's why we don't need the curly braces in the return statement. And finally, difference number three. The this keyword in an arrow function is automatically bound to the parent's context. I'll show you what I mean. Suppose we have a car object, and we have a property, color, and a drive function, which has an inner function. We'll declare this inner function using the traditional function syntax. And inside this inner function, we'll console out the this keyword, and we'll call the inner function right away. Now, what do you think will happen if I call the drive function? What would the this keyword be? Only one way to find out. So, we see the Windows object in the console. But why is that? The reason is we're not calling the inner function on any contacts. So JavaScript, by default, will resolve the this keyword to the global object, which is the window object. If this doesn't make sense to you, feel free to watch the previous video where I talked about the this keyword. The link is in the description. Now, let's see what will happen if we declare the inner function using an arrow function. Let's create a new function on the car object called honk. And the logic of this function will be exactly the same as the drive function, except that we're using an arrow function for the inner function. What do you think will happen now? Would we still see the window object or something else? Let's find out what will happen. Well, it turns out to be the car object. And this is exactly what I meant by binding to the parent's context. So when we're creating an arrow function, JavaScript will try to pass the this keyword in the current context to the function itself. In other words, JavaScript will try to grab the this keyword immediately right above the inner function, which happens to be the honk function in our case here, and set the this keyword of the inner function to be the same as the this keyword in the honk function. The this keyword in the honk function from our function call here would be the object itself. And that's why we see the car object in the inner function. This is a very convenient feature that the arrow function offers to us. Without the arrow function, we would need to call the bind function on our inner function if we want to bind the context to something else. For example, if I want to set the this keyword in a drive inner function to our car object, I'll just call dot bind right after the function definition. Whatever you pass in inside the bind function will become the context of the inner function. So if we pass in this, which represents a car object, the inner function will now console out the car object. If I pass in a string hey, the this keyword now represents the string hey. So the arrow function is really just calling the dot bind this combination for our convenience. The reason is because we almost always want to access the parent context inside an inner function. If you don't want the context to be automatically bound for you, just don't use the arrow function and stick to the traditional function and call the bind function. All right, key takeaway for this lesson. We don't need the return and curly braces in an arrow function if the function itself is a one-liner. If there's only one argument, the round brackets are optional. Arrow function automatically binds the parent's context to itself. That's it for now, and I'll see you again in the next video. If you enjoyed the content of this video, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and the bell icon for more content to come. It will really help me out. Thanks for the support.